In this video, I'm going to discuss how multiple ERP generator sources combine together in our scalp electrodes. The key underlying concept is that when you have multiple voltages passing through a conductor at the same time, they simply sum together. So the scalp signals we would get from these three generator sources when they're present simultaneously is equal to what we'd get by summing the signals for each source alone. As a result, the voltage at any given scalp electrode is simply a weighted sum of the underlying source waveforms. This superposition of multiple ERP components at each electrode site creates real challenges for ERP researchers. In fact, I call it the superposition problem. We want to know how each individual component varies across experimental conditions or across groups of subjects, but the components are mixed together in our scalp recordings. There are two general classes of solutions to the superposition problem. The first is to combine clever experimental designs with simple but thoughtful analyses of the data. The second is to try to mathematically estimate the locations and source waveforms of the underlying components. In this lecture, I'm going to focus on this second approach, which is often called source localization. Let's start by taking a closer look at how the voltages from the sources form a weighted sum at any given scalp electrode. The weighting between a given component and a given electrode depends on the location and orientation of the dipole, the location of the electrode, and the conductivity of the brain, meninges, skull, and scalp. You can think of these weights as constants. Although they may change gradually over development, or suddenly if someone has an open head injury, they'll be stable over a recording session, and usually for months or years. And you can actually estimate the weights reasonably accurately from a structural MRI scan. This is called the forward problem, the problem of estimating the voltages in our scalp electrodes if we knew the locations, orientations, and source waveforms of the underlying components. And it's a straightforward, tractable physics problem but it's not the problem we actually want to solve. We want to solve the inverse problem, the problem of estimating the locations and source waveforms of the underlying components when given the ERP waveforms from the scalp electrodes. Unfortunately, the inverse problem isn't so straightforward. In fact, it's an ill-posed problem. There's an infinite set of underlying generator configurations that could perfectly explain any given observed scalp distribution. To come up with a unique solution for a given observed data set, we would need to include additional constraints. Many different algorithms have been proposed for solving the inverse problem, and they all involve applying different constraints. Before I discuss mathematical source localization techniques, I'd like to briefly address a question that I'm often asked. Couldn't we just combine fMRI and ERP data to get both spatial and temporal resolution? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. ERPs are almost entirely a result of postsynaptic potentials, but the bold signal in fMRI is sensitive to anything that causes a change in blood oxygenation. And the long integration period of fMRI means that it's mostly sensitive to sustained brain activity, where ERPs mainly pick up transient responses. It's easy to think of scenarios where you could get an fMRI effect without an ERP effect, an ERP effect without an fMRI effect, or even opposite direction fMRI and ERP effects. A long time ago, I wrote this paper outlining those possibilities. The bottom line is that there just isn't an easy way to combine fMRI and ERP data. Now I'd like to briefly explain a related technique that you may have heard of, magnetoencephalography, or MEG. MEG is just the magnetic signal that accompanies the EEG. Whenever you have an electrical dipole, a magnetic field is running around it. So the electrical dipoles that create the EEG and ERPs also create a magnetic field, the MEG. If a dipole lies right underneath the skull, the magnetic field will exit the skull and enter again, and the strength of this magnetic field will go up and down along with the EEG. The magnetic field outside the head runs perpendicular to the electric field on the scalp. The advantage of MEG over EEG is that the skull is transparent to magnetism. The high resistance of the skull really blurs the EEG, decreasing our spatial resolution. Because we don't have this blurring for MEG, we get better spatial resolution, but at a cost. The magnetic fields are tiny, and to measure them you need a superconducting quantum interference device, or SQUID. Does that sound expensive? It is. An MEG system might cost you several million dollars, whereas an ERP system might be twenty to forty thousand dollars. However, there's a new kind of sensor called an optically pumped magnetometer that's much less expensive, so MEG might become more common in the coming years.